All right, we're going to do some more multiplying polynomials. We're just going to look at some special cases. So I want you to take just a second and pause the video, multiply these three problems out, and then we'll talk about them together. All right, so when you multiply this one out, you should have got an x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. If you combine the like terms, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, and the second one, you multiplied it out, right? That's x squared plus 5x minus 5x minus 25. Those two middle terms cancel out. We get x squared minus 25. So I want you to think for a second of, like, why did those middle terms cancel out? Like, what was it about this problem up here that caused that to happen? And isn't it just the fact that it's an x minus 5 and an x plus 5? That's what made it so I got a positive 5x and a minus 5x, right? That made those go away. So this one didn't have a middle term. This one did. Okay, number three, what happens a lot on this is I see students say that this is x squared plus 9. So if you have that, don't feel bad. That actually is wrong, but don't feel bad because a lot of us do that. The reason why is because if you remember in the last unit we talked about exponent rules, if I take 3x and square it, that comes out, I can just square the 3 and square the x, so it ends up being 9x. Or even if I have x over 3 and I square it, same thing, I square the x and I square the 3. This problem is different though because instead of being multiplied together or divided, this one has a plus there. Okay, that makes it so you, that rule does not apply anymore. You cannot just square the x and the 3. In fact, if you look back up at the original problem, doesn't x plus 3 squared really mean to go x plus 3 times x plus 3? What that means is the answer to this problem is really this. Like really I'm going to go x plus 3 times x plus 3 and multiply it out. I'm going to end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. So what our learning goal is for today is I want to know how to use some shortcuts to multiply out. There's two different special cases. We have this first one where I have x minus 5 and x plus 5 where they're, these are called conjugates where the x and the 5 are the same but the inside ones are opposite. And the other one is if I have, these are called perfect squares when I have something x plus something or x minus something squared. We want to know, we're going to find some shortcut ways of multiplying those out. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples here. I'm going to skip past that for now. So if you look at this one, if I have 3x plus 4 squared, let's just multiply it out the long way. So we know that 3x plus 4 squared means to go 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. Now, and all we're going to do is just distribute. So I go 3x times 3x, uh, 3x times 4, 4 times 3x, and 4 times 4. If we combine the middle terms, we end up with 3x squared plus 24x plus 16. Okay, I want you to try this next one. So let's do it the long way. You have 5x minus 2y squared means to go 5x minus 2y times 5x minus 2y. Go ahead and multiply that out and see, pause the video, multiply it out and see what you get. So we should have ended up with 25x squared minus 10xy. You multiply an x and a y together, you can't combine them, so it just stays as x times y or xy. Minus 10xy plus 4y squared. Combine the middle terms. 25x squared minus 20xy plus 4y squared. Okay, what I want you to do next is I do want you to pause the video. I want you to see if you can come up. These are both perfect squares is what we call them. I want you to see if you can come up a way of how I can get from there down to there, you know, from there down to there, without having to actually um, write it out and multiply and do the whole distrib you know, double distributive or FOIL and multiply that out. So see if you can come up with an idea, and then we'll talk about it together. All right, so hopefully what you noticed is, actually I just noticed this, I made a mistake here. Let's fix that. 
3x times 3x is actually 9x squared. Sorry about that. I think the rest of it's good. But anyway, what hopefully you noticed is that 9x squared just comes from squaring the 3x. So if I want to do a shortcut, I'm just going to look up there, hey, you got a 3x, 3x times 3x, or 3x squared is, or 3x, or yeah, 3x squared is 9x squared. The last number came from squaring the 4. 4 times 4, or 4 squared is 16. But we've got to figure out what the middle number is. So hopefully what you noticed is this. If I take 3x and times it by 4, that's 12x. But I always end up with two of them. So I go 3x times 4 is 12x, but I'm going to times that by 2. 12x times 2 is 24x. Okay. That way, I, again, I can get all the way down there without having to go through all those steps. Let's check this next one, see if that works on here. So again, I'm going to take the 5x and square it. 5x times 5x, or 5x squared is 25x squared. I'm going to take the 2y, and it doesn't matter that it's a minus, because a minus 2y squared, when you square a negative, it becomes a positive. So it's going to be a plus, and 2y squared is 4y squared. All I have to do is figure out what that middle term is. Well, I just times them together. 5x times a minus 2y is a minus 10xy. And then because it's repeated twice, I always times it by 2. Minus 10xy times 2 is a minus 20xy. So again, we wanted to see this pattern and recognize this pattern. And that can allow us to use this shortcut to multiply this out. This really isn't necessary. You could always multiply these out without knowing the shortcut. So if you ever forget, you're fine. But if we recognize this pattern, it can make it a little easier for us now. And later on when we get to factoring, which we'll be doing a couple lessons from now, it will make it a lot easier. Okay, let's try a couple of these. Let's do one more together, and then I'll have you do one on your own. Uh, let's try this one right here. Um, so I got an x plus 7 squared. So I just take the first term and square it. I take the 7 and square it. That's a positive 49. But remember, there's got to be a middle term right there. So to get it, I times those together. 7 times x is 7x, and I times it by 2. 7x times 2 is a 14x. I'm good to go. Uh, look at this one. I got 7x minus 3. So I take this 7x and square it. 49x squared. I take the minus 3 and square it. It's square negative. It's a positive plus 9. And then I times them together. 7x times a minus 3 is a minus 21x. And I times it by 2. So that's a minus 42x. Uh, so again, if you ever forget, right, if I get on a test or a quiz and I'm like, I can't remember what to do. Well, it's supposed to be an N there, sorry. You can always do this. Just know that a square means to times it by itself. So you can go 3M plus 2 times 3M plus 2 and just do the whole distributive property. That takes longer, though. Our shortcut is just this. I square the 3M, 9M squared. I square the N, that would just be an N squared, plus N squared. And then you got to find that middle term. So I times them together. 3m times n is 3mn. And then I times it by 2, I'd get 6mn. That's what it comes out to. Okay, so that's that. that that's the per, these are called perfect squares. When I'm taking a, I should say, let me add one more thing to that. Perfect square binomials. The reason why we call that is because there's two terms, right? Two terms is binomials, and perfect square is when you time something by itself. The other special case is, is the easiest one, and this is just the difference of squares. This is that second problem that we saw. So doing it the long way, this t plus 5 times t minus 5, I go t times t, t squared, t times a minus 5, minus 5t. Five, 5 times t is a positive 5t. And 5 times a minus 5 would be a minus 25. But what's going to happen, this is what we saw, is that minus 5t and that plus 5t are add up to be 0. right? They're opposites. So when I add them together, I get 0. They go away. So when you do these, these are called, we're going to call them the difference of squares. Because when I get my answer, I have something squared, t squared, minus something else squared, 5 squared. So that's what we call it. The di a difference means subtraction, right? So difference of squares. 
But what happens on all of these, if I have t plus 5 from t times t minus 5, the middle terms are going to cancel out. So look at b. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. I'm not going to multiply the whole thing out because I can see it's 3x plus y and 3x minus y. I know the middle terms are going to cancel. So I'm just going to go 3x times 3x is 9x squared. y times a minus y is a minus y squared. I'm not even going to bother with this step right here because I know those two middle terms are going to cancel. So this is your second special case. We can use that shortcut. Uh, so let's just try one or two of these. Um, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to see this and say, hey, this is that special case. It's that difference of squares. I have x plus 3y and x minus 3y. So all I have to do is take x times x, x squared, and 3y times minus 3y. So it's a minus 9y squared, and I'm finished. Now, if you did it the long way, right, this is what would happen. Minus 3xy plus 3xy minus 9y squared. Well, those two add up to be 0, right? So we're, we're just trying to shortcut that and make it a little bit easier. You guys try 6 right here. So pause the video, try it if we've got it, and then we're ready to go. So if I recognize I got 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. It's that pattern. It's that difference of squares pattern. So I go 2x times 2x, or 2x squared, would be 4x squared. And 1 times a minus 1, or minus 1 squared, would be minus 1. And I'm done. This one would just be x squared minus 100. And we got it. So this is, this is pretty simple. Again, on both of these special cases, the perfect square binomials and the difference of squares, you can always multiply them out the long way, and you'll see the answer. Um, just if you recognize the patterns, it can make it a little quicker and easier for us. Plus, later on, again, when we get to factoring, if you can recognize those patterns, that will be really helpful.